the very first keyboard I purchased as a working adult fresh out of college was a Logitech Wireless Solar K750 keyboard. That nifty board was essentially responsible for my first few years of paychecks. I hammered the keys day in and day out as I utilized every aspect of film production except principal photography using that. To this day, I have an extremely soft spot for the combination of that first-gen Logitech keyboard and the very first MX Master mouse. I still use the MX Master 2S as my everyday workhorse mouse to this day. After overloading my life with mechanical keyboards, I found myself back on a Logitech work keyboard. This time, the keyboard sitting next to the MX Master 2S shares the same MX name. This is my full review of the Logitech MX Mechanical Wireless Keyboard. Just to hammer out some details right off the bat, I purchased the full-size board that has 110 tactile mechanical keys. Logitech also produces this with two other types of keys as well as a 75% compact board. I found the layout of my full-size board to be well-spaced, albeit slightly compressed together. From your typing angle, there is a sense of claustrophobic spacing that is deceptive. I was able to type quite effectively on this board, but I didn't notice my fingers slipping over the neighboring keys here and there. This is a cause and effect of the extremely low profile keys that Logitech claims is more comforting for a user's wrist position. There is only one adjustable angle on the board and I do prefer that over typing flat on the table. I will agree with Logitech that at this ascendant position, I do feel more comfortable typing on this keyboard than I have on my last few. The keycaps have a ridiculously smooth feeling on the fingertips. They're plastic ABS keycaps with a slight dip in the curve to accentuate texture for your fingers to strike. Because this is a low profile keyboard, the keys travel less distance upon input. I don't really feel much affinity for this type of mechanical technology, but I do know some gamers who live and die by low profile boards, and I do see a tremendously satisfying aesthetic presence to low profile boards as they do look slick on any desk setup. There's a sense of futuristic simplicity behind the look of this mechanical keyboard. After a year of constantly rotating between borderline like obnoxiously loud switches on gaming keyboards, these tactile brown switches are a welcome change of pace. I forgot what a normal sounding typing experience should sound like until I got into a rhythm on the MX. It's a muted clickiness that still supplies enough fullness behind an input to be satisfying for a mechanical board. This is the first time I've used a low profile brown switch combination and I do enjoy the input behind the operation. In terms of the functionality, Logitech has thrown just about every shortcut you could possibly ask for on Mac OS and Windows. There's a full FN row with full media control and also a numpad. If you need a full-size keyboard for manual control of everything on your computer, Logitech is one of the best brands to supply that functionality. There are three dedicated buttons for toggling between the computers. The MX is a wireless Bluetooth keyboard that uses the receiver. It charges via a USB-C slot on the top right corner of the frame. I've gotten about three weeks of usage out of one charge with backlighting turned on at all times. I also make sure to switch the keyboard off when I'm done working with it to prolong the battery life. Speaking of backlighting, the MX does have solid white light that passes through the keycaps. It's clear and visible to read in a dark setting, and I found the keyboard to be pleasant to look at on my desk. The backlighting will hibernate when it doesn't uh, sense any keystrokes after a few seconds. This is a very... I guess you could say independent keyboard that truly does feel like it is working for you instead of the other way around. Now, in terms of build quality, the MX is a mixture between hard plastic and aluminum. The body and the frame are made from a plastic material, but the keys rest on top of a thin sheet of aluminum. Logitech went with a two-tone color approach with both the body and the key layout. I find the light gray and the dark gray combo to be a bit generic looking, I'll be honest. However, this color scheme does help the keyboard easily assimilate into an office setting. Ultimately, I found the MX to live up to its namesake in quality and performance. 
it just feels like a natural companion to my MX Master Mouse, working on the programs I used to use the original Logitech K750 with. I love the comfort level and functionality that that board provides with very little trade-off, and this does it too. At $150 sticker price, it does face stiff competition for folks who teether between using gaming keyboards for both work and play. As much as I do like this particular board for work, there are a handful of gaming mechanical keyboards at this price point I probably would choose over this one as my daily work keyboard. Not everyone would be able to incorporate a mechanical gaming keyboard with that gaming aesthetics in the workplace though, and that is where Logitech should be targeting this board too. Once again, I'm Alex from the Subnautics. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. This really helps the channel. And leave me a comment what you think of this and if you've used MX Masters in the past. And I'll see you guys next time. So the other day, I was on a Zoom call at work. And I just dropped everything I was saying. And I told them, subscribe.